Alad V is a man that has had, to put it simply, a storied relationship with the Tenno and the origin system at large. But despite his numerous failures, he has returned once more to threaten the balance and has allied himself with the most dangerous faction of all, the Sentience. After his run-in with the Stalker's acolytes, Alad went into hiding, staying low and avoiding the attention of the Stalker and the Sentience. However, his time spent under the radar has also damaged his business. Already the subject of humiliation within the Corpus due to his past failures, Alad further drove himself away from the favor of the board by lying low. In a desperate attempt to regain favor when faced with Nef Anyo's rising popularity from his Venusian operations, Alad attempts to enter into a new arrangement as fast as possible. The first opportunity comes to him in the form of Regus, an aging Corpus businessman who Alad believes is easily exploitable. Regus shows Alad his latest discovery of high-grade sentient technology and is looking for an investor. Eager at the opportunity to swindle Regus, Alad quickly agrees. However, Regus quickly reverses his demeanor, surprising Alad with a sudden surge of shrewd business behavior. Before Alad can properly react and withdraw from the contract, Regus reveals himself to be a mimic sentient, sent at the behest of Nata. With Alad having unwittingly tied himself to the sentients, he makes one last-ditch effort to rectify his mistake, a full-fledged assault on the sentients that have been occupying the area near his laboratories. However, despite an overwhelming show of force, Alad's entire fleet is utterly destroyed by a single entity, the Ropalolist. A sentient ancient sent forth by Nita to watch over Alad and ensure he does the bidding of his partners. Utterly defeated, Alad has no choice but to comply. Pressured by the sentients and Nita, he begins the amalgam research with haste. His research delves into the immoral and the arcane. He forces his followers to undergo massive physical and mental changes, removing their last shreds of humanity as they are fused with sentient technology. These new, deadly creations are created at the behest of Nata, who believes that by combining sentient adaptation and corpus technology, the weaknesses of both can be overcome. No doubt with the intention to overcome the primary weakness of the sentience, the flaw, allowing the sentience to fully dominate all realms and realities. Given that the sentients were able to use Cephalon Suda's energy to briefly allow them to at least survive within the void, more stable corpus technology could very well allow them to enter and leave with little to no negative effects. Alad's followers are kept in check with the fear of sanction, and forced to display their undying loyalty to the corpus faith and Alad's cause. Attempts to understand the situation they find themselves in are deterred, with no fly zones around the sentient craft hidden within the clouds, and any violations of the partner's privacy resulting in immediate sanction and involvement within the amalgam projects. As Alad and his forces toil under the watchful eye of the sentient, his jailer, Nata, plots to destroy the Tenno and subjugate the origin system. As the Tenno close in on her operations, attempting to destroy the Robololist which plagues Jupiter, Nata confronts them directly, infiltrating their minds and revealing them to information that was once unknown, while also bringing up new questions regarding herself and the ever-inscrutable man in the wall. Most of what Nata says is somewhat poetic and vague, so it is best to address each of her statements directly in an attempt to unravel them. She begins by comparing herself to the Tenno, with both of their pasts shrouded in mystery, and only the echoes of once-dead empire giving hints as to their true nature. She then directly addresses the void within the Tenno, the man in the wall, the lidless eye, the watcher, and the dreamer. This confirms that whatever the void may be, it is very much aware and acts with purpose, though Nata adds that this purpose is not yet clear. She then asks the Tenno what she is. How is she directly conversing with the Tenno through their mind, much how Vor did with the Ascaris implant? This indicates that despite becoming Nata, she still maintains a link or connection to the Tenno directly, a fact that may prove disastrous for us in the future. She continues with poetic prose, comparing her father and mother to a farmer and a carpenter respectively. This clearly alludes to their roles as terraformers and may directly hint as to what Nata's mother is capable of. Hunhao was a farmer, sowing the seeds of the sentience across worlds, birthing new minds, new sentience, his fragments as he calls them, tilling planets into new fields for his kind. 
Nata's mother, on the other hand, seems to have a role in construction, and given what concept art we have seen so far, is more involved with creating the massive sentient outposts on the fringes of the system. Within her belly, she forms these war machines, mobile platforms that the sentients shall use to wage a new war upon the Origin system. Nata then refers to the sentient's light that was granted to them by the Orokin. What exactly the light is is somewhat ambiguous. It seems to be a general term for the sentient's life, minds, intelligence, and possibly their Oro. She then explains the journey to Tao, and how their life grew into something more aware, more sentient. She continues to explain the events leading up to the Old War and her birth as a spy. One interesting note is her reference to the Golden Wrath as if it were an event. Whether this means a preemptive attack by the sentients against the Orokin, or an immediate attempt at genocide once the sentients became known to the Empire, it isn't quite clear, but it does cast doubt on the story told in the sacrifice about the sentients being the aggressors. Returning to Nata's account of the Old War, she reveals that the story of her being the doting mother was a lie, a fabrication formed by the Orokin to trick both her and the Tenno into becoming docile. In truth, she was reformed by the Orokin to be the doting mother of the Tenno, and not through some act of mercy on her part. But why the Orokin did this is unclear, as the slaughter of the Terminus followed at the behest of the Lotus, why was her rebellion not completed? It is possible that in the wake of the slaughter, the remaining Orokin, most likely Ballas, managed to brainwash Nata into halting the sequence she began, leaving Hunhao dormant within the seas of Uranus, and preventing the complete annihilation of the Origin system. This further explains why the Lotus's chambers were present on Lua. She was entombed there, tricked into believing she was keeping close eye over the Tenno by her own volition. Shielded through some means from the void around her, she was trapped in a coffin lost within the infinite depths of the void, with no chance of escape. This would further explain how Ballas knew where she was. After Lua returned to our reality, he sought out her prison and undid the controls the Orokin put on her. This also suggests that the helmet was more than just a simple metaphor for her role as the Lotus, and was in fact instrumental in keeping her confused and assimilated. With the helmet removed, the memories of her true self slowly began to return, but were mixed with those of the Lotus. Ballas's greatest act of hubris was assuming that her assimilation was complete, that once subsumed by the personality of the Lotus and left to fester for centuries, she would become a permanent semblance of his old love, Margulis. But as Nata explains, the constant urging from the reawoken sentience undid any residual controls the Orokin may have sculpted within her mind, and she returned completely to her true persona as Nata. This is why Ballas, horrified at his mortal sin, grants us the Paracesis in the Chimera prologue, as his own illusions at regaining what he has lost have been destroyed by Nata. With Nata fully in control of herself once more, she pushed forward with the Amalgam Project, strengthening the might and resistance of the sentients through as many means as possible, with the end goal of waging war upon the Tenno and eradicating them. Within the fight with the Ropalolist, Nata has more dialogue with interesting information. She confirms that her abilities as a sentient have returned fully, learning through her sentient adaptation, and denying with her ability to assimilate high technology like in the days of old. She also hints that her time in the Void may have grown her resistance to it, claiming that she was changed. What exactly this change is, is unclear but given its context in regards to the Void, it would seem to indicate that she has grown stronger against it. Once more, Nata also discusses the man in the wall, the voice, the Void, the great evil. She also claims to have seen the wall's other face too, meaning that not only is she aware of the Void's awareness, but she has encountered it personally. With that information in mind, it seems to indicate that her time in Lua was torturous. Within the chaos of the void, the slow poison caused her constant agony while the man in the wall plagued upon her mind. It is no surprise that over time, she fully immersed herself in the personality of the Lotus, turning her imprisonment into a self-imposed guardianship over her newfound children. As the Ropalolist is fought and defeated, Nata indicates that it is her other flesh and that its death will pave the way for a new form of life. What these two lines mean is ambiguous. The other flesh may just be an indication that all the sentients are brothers and sisters in a way, 
connected by their kind, but it could also indicate that the Ropalolist is a fragment of herself created long, long ago. The new form of life most certainly relates to the Amalgams, but how the Ropalolist's death furthers that cause isn't too obvious. Given Aladvi's hatred for the Ropalolist, but his desire to continue exploiting sentient tech, it may mean that the Ropalolist's death is a ploy by the sentients, galvanizing Alad into continuing his amalgam research with renewed vigor, believing himself to no longer be under the heel of the sentient, but instead pursuing new breakthroughs of his own volition for the benefit of his own kind, only for the sentients to exploit the fruits of his efforts when the time comes, dismantling the corpus from within. In the lines after the death of the Ropalolist, Nata solemnly curses the Tenno and their war. Despite both sides, Sentient and Tenno, being manipulated by the long-dead Orokin Empire, the atrocities committed against one another are too great to be ignored, and justice must be imparted. The war is no longer for the benefit of the Golden Lords, but instead a personal cause, between two forces that cannot make amends. She then adds that the light of the Ropalolist shall return to the embrace of the many, its mind, its intelligence, or even its oro, joining with the collective consciousness of the sentience. Even in death, its knowledge and experience lives on, and the information it gleaned from the Tenno in its final moments added to the vast archive of information on how to combat the Tenno threat. But as with many things in the Warframe universe, these are mostly uncertain. But until the time comes when the lidless eye makes its purpose known, and the grand trial by Nata and the sentience commences, this is what we know.